Hi, Dick Rochford here. Uh, there's a nice large thunderstorm off uh, to the southwest. And uh, that right now is, uh, for the sake of uh, explanation, is right over Charlotte. There's coming up over Charlotte. Frequency's been very busy. There's three or four people holding airlines and uh, a couple diverting to Raleigh. And so what this video is about is what not to do when all this is going on. And you already know what I'm going to say if you watch my other videos. Don't use Nexrad as a tactical tool. The resolution is too low, and it's old information. Now, that's just the information for delivery, or the time for delivery. You. You must know that it takes time to process this. And so what we want to do is use color weather radar to point the way. Now there's an important concern, or consideration I should say, uh, here in that we're not flying the same direction that the radar is looking. We're flying about five degrees. You see that little magenta diamond there? That's our track over the ground. That track is about five degrees left of the lubber line of the aircraft, which is that little white inverted triangle there. That means if we want to see what we're going to track over with a radar, we have to set the bearing pointer to five left, the relative bearing difference. Let's set this to five left and just see what we got in front of us. This is assuming we can't see out the window, which of course we can today, at least in this part of the flight. So we set the five left and come here to the vertical mode. And remember now that the paint that's asymmetrical is weather. And I'm not talking about this down there. That's an artifact that we've been talking about. We haven't been able to figure out what that is. There's no weather in front of us for 60 miles. And by weather, I mean water. And as you can see, that's, uh, that's mostly true. There might be some weather down below us, but... Um, not directly in front of us. There's one other trick I want to share with you at times like this, and that is cloud tops. Now, if you've been using the SIPFIP, the current icing potential and the forecast icing potential, to corroborate with the outside air temperature, you know that these clouds are not dangerous today. And you would know that if you use the vertical profile, the SIPFIP and a vertical profile in for flight. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, go to my YouTube channel and uh, Google on uh, CIP slash FIP in for flight. See if you can't uh, come up with something that I've previously done because I've done a lot on that. So right now we're on our way to Florence and then over to Myrtle. And Myrtle is a bit encumbered this morning. So I'm going to turn on the cursor, move the cursor over to the general area of Myrtle, and you can see some red and orange down there. The approach begins at Oostep. So, um, and again, I'm not going to even try to convince you that those two events are where they uh, are where they say they are. Uh, this is a strategic tool, but what we can say is that there's a way to get to the airport around those two small events and we don't need to concern ourselves at least for the moment about where that we're going to be taken there alright then lastly the VSR vertical speed required for the VNAV is already at 442 so we're going to be starting down soon and a real quick and dirty VP vertical path would be uh, AGL altitude, zero feet, uh, MSL, or AGL rather, at a rate of 500 feet a minute. And, and that's 
So our top of descent is only four minutes away. Now, I, I know that descent can't possibly happen as planned, but that's not the point. The point is, is Thagoras has drawn a line for us, and we could go down incrementally or not so incrementally, uh, but now we know where we stand in that descent and can uh, uh, keep keep up with it and not get behind. And we all know the best way to stay ahead is to not get behind. Dick Rochford, fly safely. Train often. 